Welcome to Crimson Guitars and welcome to the, uh, well, this crazy thing. Uh, this is the Cody guitar. It is being made out of a lump of 42,000 year old New Zealand swamp Cody. Very lightweight. I've had to flood it with super glue and resin and all sorts of stuff and uh, overbuild it a little bit, but that's all fine because, well, actually today it might not be fine. One neck just uh, chilling out, not knowing the uh, strain and tension it's going to be put under soon. And, uh, and one puppy just chilling out in the workshop. The door's open at the moment, so he's on his lead. We're all good. <laughs> so before I do anything else, these are the bridge pins, uh, Dodaro's premium grade bridge pins, uh, Ebony. Yep, these are standard, which is nice. There are a few things more pleasurable to me than using a nice hundred year old egg beater style drill, specifically Miller's Falls or Good Old Pratt, if I have the choice. You might have noticed that I also particularly enjoy uh, upending people's worlds and uh, instilling in them a love for good quality vintage tools. I'm a bad man. I'm not sorry. Combined with a nice, sharp Famag drill bit. A little bit of reaming so they fit. Maybe a lot of reaming so they fit. We might end up going for the same things, but with abalone. But, uh, I don't know. There we go. Sand, oil, clean, sorted. So my clamping call didn't actually put any dents in. And if I'd known it was going to be that effective, I would have uh, finished this whole thing beforehand. Uh, certainly safer. But uh, here we are, some 600 grit wet and dry, being used dry, of course. Fretboard restorative, this is what I'd use on an acoustic guitar if I was uh, changing the strings, so uh, let's do that. I am going to be uh, installing the, the pickup another day. For now, I just want to see how she reacts under tension. That will do for now. Well, I need to sort out a, a neck plate. I'm interested in a sort of a smoked acrylic. I want to see, I want to see what that does if it's strong enough. That is uh, what we're replicating. Although uh, I'm going to, well, I want to use that as a starting point. Now the piece I've got, that's a little proud actually. Mm, shouldn't actually be an issue. Yeah, I've got some proper pencils on order. This will give me a piece 
slightly larger than I actually want. These, so useful. The ability to have an idea and then just do it is intensely liberating. It might not work. And if it doesn't work, I know something and so do you. And that 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 is what's cool. <sighs> Hell I'm thinking about doing a Perspex uh, trim block. I've seen wooden trim blocks before. We've seen aluminium trim blocks before. Why not Perspex? Fight me in the comments. Okay. I actually do quite like how it's slightly raised up there. Uh, we'll see. Not too happy with the shape there. I should have left it just square. And uh, I think I'm going to make another one before the end. But I want to see what the client thinks. Uh, the whole area on the curve there, that can be buffed up and will be buffed up to a high gloss uh, unless we want uh, it clouded on the edges. I don't think we probably do. Maybe, maybe gloss is, uh, is required. Just cleaning up the curve. Uh, yeah, the softness of your hands is what's required. Now here's a fun day. This is a uh, this is a new tool for Crimson Guitars. It's a essentially a hand-powered random orbital sander pad with a Velcro, etc. Sadly, the pad that I want to use, 600 foam backed, is not the five inches that I've got. But uh, this thing is so cool, and uh, yeah, I uh, I met the gentleman who makes them for us at Maker Central and uh, was blown away. We make most of our tools in-house, but uh, yeah, where possible, we'll uh, uh, support other makers. Damn it, even though I know I'm going to be uh, taking this piece and uh, not using it on the actual guitar. I'm still putting in more time than I really should. Ultra mega versatile, multi-use guitar polish. Just a little bit of that. So the main question is, do I want to uh, make another one of these, but thickness so it's flush with the body? Uh, let me know in the comments. Well, that's a bit good for about three minutes work, isn't it? I'm just gonna do the same on the, uh, uh, on the other two sides quickly. Uh, it's low effort, high impact, just the way I like it. Incidentally, you can also uh, put a polishing pad on one of these and uh, yeah, be done.
<laughs> yeah, I like that. The fender positions aren't going to quite work on this, which doesn't matter because we have slightly shrunk the plate. Always use a, a brad awl or something to mark your position. Hmm. Let's use an automatic center punch, actually. I always wondered how an automatic center punch found the center. That's not what's automatic. That's not what's automatic. That's not what is automatic. It's sprung and it flaks itself for the longest time. I wondered. Yes, I'm embarrassed. Good thing this wasn't the actual piece, isn't it? See what I was telling you about earlier about making mistakes and uh, then uh, us all learning from them? Many other YouTubers would hide this uh, because they're too embarrassed to be fallible. The fact is that we are all fallible and without totally f***ing up, uh, we will never make any improvements in our craft, in our lives, etc. So, uh, well, I'm going to take this as an opportunity to quickly drill a few more holes and see how I should have done it. And then we're going to make the actual part that's I'm hoping going to actually go on the guitar because I'm, I really like the look of this. Okay, done. That actually only took another, I don't know, 20 minutes. And I know how to, how to drill it now, which is how I drill headstocks. I drill uh, a pilot hole through uh, the entire thing with a, with a small uh, bit. I then go with a center point and I'll drill from both sides. There is still a slight danger of the whole thing shattering, uh, but uh, in this case, I don't have another option other than potentially reaming it out. See, the second the camera starts, I have better ideas. Yeah, I'm going to change that. Yeah, so this is a, this is a budget ream. You can get these things on, uh, on Amazon. Uh, that's about three millimeter on the end. I'm going to run some tests in the, uh, in the broken piece first and see what happens. So I've got just a standard uh, three millimeter uh, drill bit. And as long as you push the perspex down up against something or clamp it against something flat, you can drill through without shattering it. I'm then going to ream it out to the correct width. At this point, well, I just need to get this finished. There are, yeah, essentially that needs to be clamped up against a piece of waste material so that as you tear through, it does not uh, shatter. With guitar building, I can justify using pretty much any material I can think of. I want to use, I want to buy scrap metal and I want to use the word sinter, <laughs> sinter it down. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for, Sam? Smelt. Smelt, thank you very much. There we go, nice and clean. And this is that uh, reamer, which now just goes in. And, uh, and we're golden. There we are. Yeah, based on what happened last time, I'm going to film the whole process just in case this one breaks too.
I've run out of battery. So the thing with the reamer is it's gently going through and slowly enlarging these holes uh, without much danger. And uh, yeah, this is, this is the way. Yeah, I could probably do with uh, some sort of a, a locating device on here, but uh, it's not a, the hole does not have to be precise to within half a millimeter. Okay, done a few tests, used a few different uh, countersinks and nothing broke. And then just as you go, hold the head of the, the screw up and uh, until you get to a point where it is where you want it to be. That's a cool look. I hope the client likes it. It's a pity there's that uh, uh, wormhole there. <laughs> there's two wormholes there, but uh, hey, is what it is. Just with a, uh, a hand countersink, I'm gonna now come in here and uh, tidy these up. Just a fraction. I'm fighting the temptation to polish inside the bevels, the shampoo, the countersink. I will accept your applause for a, a fantastically intelligent outside of the box thinking with regards to how I'm polishing the inside of this. Uh, thank you very much. I spent at least five minutes uh, while I was uh, preparing, uh, while I was cleaning up that, thinking, oh, how am I gonna polish up the, uh, the bottom of that? Um, what, you know, am I going to go onto the lathe and make a custom tool? Could I use the, uh, the countersink? No, I can't. Obviously, it's got teeth, etc. Uh, oh, wait, there's something that I already have that's sitting on the bench that could do the job perfectly. Now, it's not perfectly polished. Uh, the problem is I don't want to scratch around the outside, even with polish. As suggested by Sean, who runs our guitar building school, this would even be faster. <laughs> I'm using a standard twist drill in reverse and uh, that means it, I'm just using friction very gently to ream the first section of the hole out without grabbing and potentially chipping the lacquer. Something else to be aware of is the, uh, the amount of twist in the drill bit. This is the FAMAG center point, and when you drill through a piece of material, the amount of twist, the helicoidal thing going on there, actually wants to pull the bit through. Uh, if you, well, if you lose control, you lose control. Having less twist, uh, a, a, a more gentle angle on it, means that this bit, uh, well, it doesn't react in the exact same way. So for this job, a standard twist bit uh, was actually the right, right call. Off camera, Matt, uh, one of the uh, luthiers in, the, in our custom shop, has done a superlative level crown and polish and uh, started making the nut. I'm going to do the slots, etc., in a minute. But uh, let's see if we can get this neck on, shall we?
So using the uh, four and a half mil center point bit, it matches the uh, size of the holes that we've just drilled into the body. And again, just in reverse, I'm using that, the center point section of it to locate the hole. There we go, I've got my locations. Time to pre-drill. I obviously don't want to drill through the, uh, the top of the fretboard. That would be a little bit poopy. Uh, but also, if you use masking tape on your drill bit, the swarf, the shavings, can push that away and therefore reduce your datum point, or increase your datum point, I suppose, and thus, uh, well, potentially create problems for you. I use a permanent marker and essentially, well, carefully, figure out where I want to go and you're on there. An alternative is a, uh, is a locking collet that sits on your drill bit. That works on both of those. Goes near to the bottom of the fretboard but not deeper. Also, hey, over time uh, that comes off or you can just clean it off with alcohol or something like that. Again, I'm starting in reverse, not that it's particularly important, this far away from the visible surface of the guitar. If you countersink just lightly up to the size of the screw, and when you put your screw in, it's not going to damage the lacquer either. I might be tempted to put threaded inserts in here and use machine screws, but uh, for now, well, let's see. I'm having a moment. Might be nice to uh, engrave something on the back of this, but also it being just nice and clear is understated and sexy. That's a cool look. That's a very cool look. I'm very, very happy. Uh, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Uh, yeah, at this point, the guitar is almost, almost, almost finished. So as is traditional, I'm going to not finish it. Very carefully just cleaning just the gunk out of the uh, tuner holes. It's left over from the uh, finishing process. Buffing, etc. And just a little bit of countersinking of the lacquer. This is a tool that uh, we don't currently offer at Crimson, but uh, I find it so useful. I think we're going to have to. Obviously, you could make one yourself. But, you know, look at that. With a fret end finishing file, I'm just making the fret ends at the, uh, the end of the nut just a little bit more comfortable. So the rest of the, f the nut is absolutely beautifully polished. I'm using the uh, Crimson fret strop, which uh, also polishes bone. Well, that's about right. Now, I've had to put some masking tape on the top of this uh, nut because uh, it was too polished. I couldn't draw on it. My fault. That's right. Now, very carefully and at a slight back angle towards the uh, tuners, I'm just cutting the uh, nut slot positions. And I'm using my finger to uh, locate the cut every single time. Uh, 
and then I'm using a uh, custom light gauge to Dario set 11 to 52 and I'm going to provisionally cut some nut slots we're not going to get all the way down but yeah it'll be close I've used the half pencil trick I've got a line that matches the top of the frets and uh, you don't want to go below that line doing my best to keep the uh, the slot angle but also the bottom of the slot nice and flat Okay, so we've got uh, Goto 510s with staggered uh, posts, so three tall, three short. Obviously the taller go on that side. Now in this case I'm using masking tape on the uh, end of the drill bit as a depth stop because I'm not actually drilling all the way down to the wood. Uh, the shavings are escaping and uh, yeah because essentially the tuner is in the way so it's not that critical. Uh, also I'm paying attention to what's happening including the fact that this is currently unscrewing the locking mechanism on the uh, uh, tuner, which is quite funny. Just because we sell the nut cubes and they are useful tools in a pinch, doesn't mean I shouldn't use the proper tool for the job when I actually have it. A nut cube is very useful. Okay, the strings are going in. I am going to make a brass plate to go here to act as a uh, as an earth point for all of the strings, which is a, a fender thing. But uh, for now, that's not required. That will happen when we. <laughs> I love doing that. Uh, when I uh, wire her up, this is just to see that uh, the whole guitar stays together. I'm not really worried about that. I've done everything that I can to make that not happen. But there's, there's, there's always that just that little niggle. Uh, it's all about the little details. There's gunk in there I want to get rid of first. This is one of my favorite new tools. This came into the vintage tool shop and did not make it, uh, no, it didn't make it online. Changed my mind. Uh, instead of the plain ebony, at this stage I'm going to put uh, the uh, Daddario premium grade bridge pins. Uh, they're ebony with mother of pearl. Uh, I think that the mother of pearl with the, with the silver hardware and the frets etc. Uh, I think just having the plain ebony pins there didn't quite, a little bit, well a little bit plain for me. this stage do I take the saddle down a little bit I think I do so I'm just gonna go and uh, sand that down another millimeter okay that's better out of interest I'm gonna start uh, measuring the height of the action there uh, with the crimson gauge and see if there's any movement as I add strings. Yeah. 
Yeah, we're we're moving at about a quarter of a millimeter in action height per string, which is uh, yeah, which is cool. And the action there is was one millimeter with four strings on, so not bad. One and a half millimeter action. Going for a semitone down at the moment. One and a half mil action. Obviously the strings are stretching as well. <sighs> She's not disintegrated. I am going to cut off the, uh, the very dangerous uh, string ends there. I was staying back. I have stabbed myself in the eyeball with one of these before doing this. Uh, best practice is to chop off the excess as you go. <sighs> Feels like a guitar. Actually, do you know what? These strings are coming off. I am going to leave them a little bit longer than I normally would, just to make life easier for myself later. I'm not seeing any movement in the top as I do this. It's amazing how many people don't stretch their strings anywhere near enough, if at all. Like so, there we go. Until it stays in tune, at which point, you know, it's gonna stay in tune. Says it all, doesn't it? Yep, we are at an action of 1.75. Everything's settling. Oh my God. Sorry, Sophia just happened to walk through. Um, nut is quite high, action's at 1.75. Okay, hold on, I'm gonna go grab the Acoustasonic. <laughs> I mean, it's so much louder. Oh no, you see it's... Let's tune them. Anyway, I... The calorie's gonna sound so much better. Kori, sorry, sorry. Oh, that's isn't cool. That great? That's perfect. Cool, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, oh, I'm very, yes. very, very happy. I'm hoping the clients enjoy it, like the smoked acrylic, and then we can have that on the on the other two as well. We have a guitar. We have a guitar. I don't think there's been any deflection in the top. Looking at that, oh, looking at that, but uh, it remains to be seen. These things develop over time, so I do need to, I do need to monitor this guitar. I'm really happy. Now, this is the uh, this is the other this is the Fender Acoustasonic. We've taken the bits out. We put a new pickup in, and a uh, uh, <laughs> that's quite funny. We've put a Ghost Acoustasonic piezo system into a Fender Acoustophonic, or is it the other way around? Other way around, other way around. damn it. The, the Kori guitar is a lot brighter. Uh, that's, that's quite interesting. Obviously we've got completely different wood. Hey, you're hearing the difference that 42,000 years in a bog makes. Uh, but also a completely different finish and, well, design. I need to go sit in my timber store. That's the Zen room of Zenness, uh, where one becomes one with the, the scent of hundreds of pieces of guitar making wood and just relax. There's a lot more to do on this instrument, which surprises me. I was, but there, there just is. There's lots of little things that I'm not quite 100% happy with. The wiring system is 
pretty much drag and drop. I've got to drill a few holes, of course. Uh, but, well, thank you for watching along. I genuinely appreciate the support. Please click like, subscribe, share, just copy a link and send it to somebody. I would much appreciate that. YouTube seems to think that's very important. Um, and hey, check out crimsonguitars.com and dailyguitarduel.com and all of these things that make these videos possible. Uh, but most importantly, get in the workshop, make some sawdust. Let's see if you can build a guitar. If. If I can build a guitar, you can build a guitar. Catch you on the flip side. Cheers. Bye-bye.